Alright, so over the past two years, I've spent a large period of time crafting my resume and applying to internships and graduate engineering roles. And what I've found is that there are some key things you need to include on your resume that employers look for, and it could be the difference between you getting the job or missing out. While I was at university, I was fortunate enough to land two internships and to be offered a graduate position before graduating. For both my internships, I was hired purely off my resume. For my graduate position, I also did an interview. Without a doubt, I definitely think that the tips I picked up along the way and applied to my resume helped me stand out from the crowd and put me in the position to accept those opportunities. But lucky for you, I'm not going to make you go through two years of research and experience to figure this out on your own, because in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my top five things to include on your resume when applying to internships and engineering graduate roles. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to pop up on the screen exactly how you should lay out everything I mentioned in this video, as well as the other basic components you should be including on your resume. So let's get into it. All right, so the first thing you want to include on your resume is the team or individual design projects you've done at university. The way you want to present this is by providing a little description of the project you've done and then by listing specific tasks you had to do to complete it. Let's look at an example of how this is done. Portal Frame Warehouse, Team Structural Design Project. In a group of five, the objective of this project was to economically design and provide a concept design report for a steel portal frame warehouse. The key tasks of this project included deriving the appropriate dead, live and wind loads for the structure, using SpaceCast to determine the worst load case combinations, sizing the structural members, and designing the connections. This description shows a much deeper understanding of the project and the tasks that go into it, and gives the reader a lot more information on the skills you have. All right, so the second thing you should definitely include on your resume is the design and computer programs you're familiar with. Think back through all the courses you've done so far at university and if there was any programs you used to complete a project in that class. Some common ones you may have come across are SpaceGas, Strain 7, AutoCAD, and SolidWorks. When completing this section, it's important not to forget about the basic ones you use every day like Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint, Word, and Outlook. Also, since working at home is very popular now, you should definitely include Microsoft Teams and Zoom on your list of programs you know how to use. All right, so the third thing you should be including on your resume is any university groups you're a part of or any professional engineering organizations you're a member of. Have you joined the University Engineers Society or taken part in one of their events they've put on. Make sure you describe your involvement in any of these events as it often shows that you're able to perform as a part of a team. If you haven't joined any university groups or societies, don't worry, because there's plenty of professional engineering organizations you can join for free right now. Engineers Australia is a really good one to join as they provide the pathway towards becoming a professional chartered engineer. Chartered engineers are really valued by companies and sought after in those senior positions. I'll pop a link in the description so if you want to join Engineers Australia, you can head to their website and find out more information. A few other engineering organisations you can join right now for free as a student member is the Concrete Institute of Australia and the Institute of Structural Engineers. Okay, so the fourth thing you definitely want to be including on your resume is your personal attributes and skills. Here you want to be highlighting your soft skills and how you've displayed them. In my opinion, the best things to list in this section are your communication skills, your ability to work autonomously, and your ability to manage your time. For example, say you're getting pretty decent grades and you've had a part-time or casual job the whole time you're studying, you could write effective time management shown through balancing high levels of university achievement and part-time employment commitments. It's very important in this section to both highlight the skill and how you've used it because listing a long range of skills is a bit pointless because from the reader's perspective, they don't know if you've actually got that skill. Okay, so the final thing you should be including on your resume is your grades and academic achievements. Now, I purposely left this one to last because while grades and academic achievements are another way to show your passion for engineering, they shouldn't be the highlight of your resume. In saying that, the things you should be including in this section are your GPA and any academic achievements or accolades you picked up along the way. These achievements could be from a class you got a really good mark in, from a challenge you entered, or a contest you performed really well in. All right, so that brings me to the end of my top five things to include on your resume. As promised, I'll pop up on the screen now exactly how I think you should lay all this out. Feel free to hit pause and take a screenshot for later use. Also, if you're interested in learning about some unique ways you can learn an engineering internship or graduate role, I suggest you check out my video here on how to get an engineering internship. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.